What's up everyone, it's your boy NornRad89 here bringing you another video and for today's video we're going to be doing a rad movie review for Under the Silver Lake. This is a 2018 A24 film that I recently caught. Yes, most recently I've been kind of diving into a lot of A24 films that were on my watch list that I haven't seen yet and Under the Silver Lake was one of them. So today we're going to talk about my positives, my negatives, the rating, and then I'm going to send you all home. So let's do this. Roll it. So Under the Silver Lake is a 2018 A24 film that's a mystery kind of comedy film is how I would describe this movie and it's directed by David Robert Mitchell and like in terms of the style of this film this is a very mystery film noir style movie that has a lot of hidden messages and meanings even within just about every scene so it's one of those films that you really have to pay attention dissect because there's stuff to check out in all the scenes plus there's beautiful cinematography as well so let's, let's just discuss this film right away and get into the positives and all kinds of stuff right now and one key positive is i think the acting is just across the board really great from all the characters. We have a huge cast in here. We have Andrew Garfield, Riley Kyo, Topher Grace, Grace Van Patten, just a cast, a plenty, and they deliver on their roles and feel like, <clears throat> excuse me, feel like real characters in this film. And like, they're all different characteristics. They all have different mannerisms and styles about them. Like, for example, Sam, Andrew Garfield's character is a guy who lives in an apartment complex and then what happens is a girl that he gets obsessed with named Sarah that he really only knows and has met once and spent one night with. He gets obsessed with her basically in that encounter and she suddenly goes missing and just vanishes out of nowhere so that sets him on this mystery and now he has a purpose in life and just the silly quirks and all the weird things that Andrew Garfield does like man he just completely blew me away like for real this is one of those films like as it was progressing as I was watching it I just couldn't believe that he didn't get like a best actor like award for this film because he just totally floored me Andrew Garfield was just completely became the Sam character and really like just brought it to life on screen another thing about this film that I mentioned before is the cinematography is beautiful just the look of the film the style it takes place in you know Hollywood LA so it's got you know just the way the colors are the way David Robert Mitchell decided to film everything he made it very tantalizing very you know beautiful to the eyes you want to touch it you want to be there and to see Sam go through this rabbit hole as he finds out you know new clue after new clue and it just takes him here and takes him there it's just it really is awesome and the, another thing is that David Robert Mitchell really honed in the editing and the style of the film and even the music that all assists in building the atmosphere and it really pulls you in and as a viewer it makes you yourself feel like you're a detective like you're on the you know the case with Sam and you're trying to dissect these clues and you're paying attention to this and wondering what this symbol means because yeah there's a lot of hidden stuff in this film even after watching the film this is one of those movies that right away after watching it I was like I need to go on YouTube and just see videos about people dissecting the meanings and all that kind of stuff and there's a lot of great stuff and also this is a film one of the first films in a really long time that was like right after after I watched it, I wanted to watch it again just because of how much fun I had with it. Another thing I loved about this movie is me being a horror fan. There are some horror moments in this movie. I wouldn't classify this film as a horror film. This is much more like a mystery comedy film, like I said, but there are horror moments graphic, gory moments in this film that I much appreciated because it just kind of you know, it came it came out of nowhere, but it makes you, it just sucks you into the scene a little bit more because you don't really expect that to happen. So the moments that it did happen, which I said there's very few, it totally just elevates the film. And this is, like I said, one of those movies that you have to just give it the full watch, give it the go because it evolves, it becomes something. And it has a lot to say about, you know, what a lot of things like society and, you know, the difference between the top 1% and what we classify as everybody else, you know what I mean? The middle class man, the poor man, everything. And then you have the top one percenters. This film has a lot to say about all those kind of things and consumerism, capitalism, and it's kind of crazy that 
it's all subtextual. It's all just there, but it doesn't take away from the true story of the film. And that's what I love. Now let's get into the mixed and negatives because this was one of those movies that it was so close. It was very close to a perfect film. Like I was almost, as I was watching it, I was like, I'm going to be very comfortable with a 10 out of 10. But here's some mixed and negatives. And these aren't hardcore negatives, but I would say that there are some moments where this film gets a little bit too self-indulgent in its craft. Where David Robert Mitchell, I understand he had a great story, a very clear-cut tone, and a style, film noir style, that he wanted to bring to life on screen. The actors, the cast he got were perfection. But there's a couple times in the film where I would say, like I said, he gets too like, you know, caught up in the style and, you know, trying to be a little weird for just weird sake, I would say. But that doesn't really hurt the film, in my opinion. It's not really bad. It's not a lot of times in terms of maybe the runtime. That's also, I would say, you could probably just trim a little bit off the top kind of thing, you know, when you go get a haircut. Like, just trim a little bit, like five, maybe ten minutes, you know, just take that off. And I think it would have been a more complete, more, you know, just better runtime, better flow of a film. And like I said, there's not really any other negatives that I have besides those two. This is a film that I had a glorious time with. The cast, the atmosphere, the music, the cinematography, the story in general. And yes, me being a fan of weird films, I like when films get crazy and they get weird sometimes. And this film is not afraid to be weird. And it has a lot to say. And like I must say, if this, if you're going to watch this film and you're going to digest it, it's currently streaming on Max. That's where you can check this film out. If you're going to watch this film, you really have to pay attention and digest the scenes and really understand where the characters are coming from and understand that you're not necessarily, <clears throat> excuse me, supposed to like all the characters in this film. That's not what you're going for. I know that's going to be probably a big hindrance for a lot of people because when people go to movies, they want to be able to grab onto a character. They want to be able to uh, you know, relate to a character and that makes the film feel realistic and more relatable. But this film, it's not designed to be that way. It's really not. This is a film that has statements. It has things to say and it has a lot to say about, like I said, capitalism, consumerism, misogyny. It's, it's really out there, this film. And it, I think it has maybe a lot and it jumbles it together but it hones it correctly for me and the landing spot was fantastic because when you take this journey with Sam Andrew Garfield's character I feel like you realize that at the beginning of the film he has a certain kind of character and he has a clear cut path and a character art throughout the film it might be a weird path it might be a crazy path and probably one that was you know a lot harder than it had to be but he made it that way He's a different person by the end of this film. So I highly recommend checking out Under the Silver Lake. You know, like I said, I'm giving it a glowing recommendation right now. This is just another A24 film for me that just knocked it right out of the park because it totally floored me. In terms of a rating, Under the Silver Lake is going to get a 9 out of 10 because, like I said, there's just a couple negatives with this film and that's it. Really, that's all. It got a two, couple times in the film, it got too self-indulgent. Shave a 10 minutes or so off of the film and psh, you got a perfect film for me. So, But I still, like I said, 9 out of 10 is a freaking glowing high recommendation. I totally, totally, you know, wish that more people would talk about this film because I feel like A24 themselves even kind of buried this film because it went straight to VOD. It didn't have a theater release or anything like that. And this is one of those movies that I think needs more eyes on it because more people need to be talking about it. And Under the Silver Lake, if you've seen it, let me know in the comment section what you think of this movie. What are your thoughts? Were you able to dissect all the meanings and the hidden messages? Were you able to, did you, after watching it, did you have to go online and look up some stuff because you were so, you know, infested with the story and what it took you on? And you're like, I want to know what this means and I want to know what that part meant. Like, because this is one of those kind of films. So definitely hit me up so we can, you know, chat in the comments. But be sure to like, subscribe, and have that notification bell poke so you're notified anytime I post a video. But most importantly, I want y'all to have a safe and happy day. Peace out.